Nehemiah chapter 8. And all the people gathered themselves together as one man into the streets that were before the water gate. So unity. They're for one purpose and one way. And it's for God. It's to be under Nehemiah and the priests like they're supposed to be and everything. Uh, Israel hasn't been like this in a long time. They spank unto Ezra the scribe to bring the book of the law of Moses, which the Lord had commanded, you know, commanded to Israel. So they want the word. Ezra the priest brought the law before the congregation, both of men and women, and all that could hear with understanding. Upon the first day of the seventh month, the seventh month is an important month. That's the month where all the uh, the feast day, most, much of the feast days are. Much of the celebrations are. This would be about our October, September. Now this is an important chapter. There's a lot of heresies in this chapter. In the September month. And he read therein before the street that was before the water gate. From morning unto midday. Well, that's where you get your church service. You have it in the morning and at noontime everyone turns into pumpkins. You got to go home. I can find it in the Bible. Preaching from morning to noon. You're in the Old Testament. But okay. I'll go by that. Before the men and women. And those that could understand. And the ears of all the people were attentive unto the book of the law. Well, not everybody's ears are attentive when you go to church from morning to noon. Some ears are falling asleep. Some ears are, are distracted by other things. Some ears, you know, talking to somebody else. They're in the church service. It says oh, everybody was attractive. Everybody was attentive. Listen, they just had the temple built. They just had the walls of, of Jerusalem built. They're seeking God. They're afraid to go back. The Babylon under sin. And Ezra the priest stood upon a pulpit of wood. See that? We go to pulpit of wood in the church. Read it. Read what the Bible says. Ezra the scribe stood upon a pulpit of wood. When's the last time you saw a preacher standing on the pulpit? Now you get some idiot out there will now get, stand on top of the pulpit to be like Nehemiah or Ezra. But that's what the Bible says. See, you don't read the Bible. You go in there half cocked, half idiot, and you know you pull things out of there, you don't know what you're talking about. He's standing on the pulpit. Which had made for the purpose. Besides him, Mananiah and Shema and Ananiah and Uriah and Pilkiah and Messiah. On his right hand, and on his left hand, Pedahiah and Shahil and Malchiah, Micaiah and Hashem and Hashabadim, and Zechariah and Meshalum. Well, you don't see groups of people standing on either side of the preacher while he's preaching. Out of the mouth of two or three, they shall be established. He's got more than two or three. Make sure he's doing it right. And Ezra opened a book in the sight of all the people. For he was above all the people. And that doesn't mean, you know, he, he was some hierarchy or anything like that. It means he was above the people in height. He could look down. They had to look up. Everybody could see the book of the law. It wasn't Ezra. And when he opened it, all the people stood up. So when you get churches, you know, they'll stand up at the ring. This is where they get it from. In the old English churches, there was no sitting. You stood for the whole message. You want to get Bible? That's what's going on here. Up in New England, they sell you the pews. And Ezra blessed the Lord. Made God happy. Run back to, I, I forget which child it is that Leah said. said, I'll be blessed of the Lord. And she turned around and said, happy am I. And then she named the boy. 
There are times you, I mean, you, you know, God, give me a blessing. Lord, send me a blessing. Why can't you bless God? Why can't you make God happy? It says, Ezra, bless the Lord. The great God. You got to throw that great God in there because they just came from Babylon where they worship any and every kind of God. And as we learned in church last night, they had the gods of wood, gods of stone, gods of gold, gods of this, gods of that, gods of that, gods of that, gods of that, had a god for everything. So Nehemiah has to throw in there the great god. Because we just come out of a bunch of mess. Like Egypt. And all the people answered, Amen! Amen! You mean they were allowed to say Amen during the, during the service? Will you stand up before the people and read the word? And I have a pulpit, but you can't say amen in the church? I've been through that. I've talked to men who are preachers today. I've talked to Christians where they've been in church, where they've been pulled in the back room, pulled in the preacher's office, pulled anywhere. And the preacher will have a nice little conversation with, you need to calm down. You're getting over too excited. You're upsetting the people. And you don't know how many times I've heard that. But amen, as much as in Nehemiah chapter 8 as the pulpit and is standing up to read the word. Shall we just go in the Bible, just take what we want, throw away everything else? That's what these perverted Bibles on the market is. If you don't allow the people to say, and I'm going to say it, if you don't allow the people to say amen, but you got the pulpit, you stand up to read the word of God and be all holy in that, you've got a perverted Bible because you don't, you allow two and you take one away. I can, pen, I can tell you all kinds of Bibles and show you where they take things away. I can show you where they add things like Easter and, and you know, December 20th. I'm, oh, I'm sorry, let me get back to the message here. With lifting up their hands. So is it wrong for somebody in church to wave their hands? Or No. Now, I wouldn't be a Pentecostal kind of thing doing it. You know, uh, no. You see somebody raising their hand praising the Lord? That's in the Bible. Just as much as the pulpit is standing up for the word of God and saying amen. Now, when I grew up, when I was first saved and all that, you know, raising the hands and all that, and listen, I was... I got saved during the Pentecostal hierarchy of, of all the hierarchies of the foolishness going around. And, oh, and if you, uh, you know. Listen, if you're doing it for the Lord and not for people to see. There are people who do all that. They do it for you to see them. That's the flesh. God does not approve of that. Well, you know, they're just there praising the Lord. And amen. Why do they do it? I can't tell you why they do it. I haven't been taught that. But it's here in Nehemiah. Remember I told you there's going to be a lot of heresies. There's going to be a lot of things in Nehemiah. Hey, isn't it great we're not studying the New Testament? We're not looking at the church? <laughs> but here we are. And they bowed their heads and worshipped the Lord with their faces to... Oh, well, we don't do that. But I can bring up pictures. I can show you pictures of Muslims doing it and big masses of crowds upon little carpets thinking that Allah is going to hear them do that. I can bring you into a churches today in America on prayer night. Well, they don't call it prayer night. No more. They call it midweek service. How did prayer like? It used to be prayer night. You used to get 15 minutes of prayer and a half hour to 45 minutes of prayer. Where people would get on their knees and pray. I could bring you churches right now, midweek service. They don't even bend down. They don't even do nothing. The only way, only way they bend down is they drop the dollar on the floor. Yeah, but when I grew up in the Catholic Church, you would take that kneel, little kneeling rail down there and you would pray. You had to get down your knees during certain parts of the liturgy or make me the sick of thee, whatever you want to call it, thee. You had to get down your knees and pray. 
But the church of God, I don't mean those water dogs, I mean the church of God. We can't even get down to one day to one day a week at least and get down on our knees. Now I understand, listen, if you got health problems like me, I can't get down on my knees that much. I have a hard time getting back up. But that's in there. The Muslims and the Roman Catholics do it very well. When I was growing up as a Catholic little boy, I made sure every prayer I had had to be on my knees. Makes me sick to be in the church as we are in today. And then, like I said, in prayer night, no one. But this is respect to the Word and to God. And Yeshua and Benai and Sherebiah, these names again, Jamin. That's, a lot of Christians would love to have that name with Jamin, you know, and Jamin for Jesus, who got the radio station. No, 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 no. You're perverting everything. You got the radio station down here. They don't even know how to spell Jamins. Can't make an S. Akub. Sharabhaya, Habajaya, Mishaya, Keltaya, Azariah, Jozbad, Hanan, Eliah, and the Levites caused the people to understand the law. And the people stood in their place. Oh, they didn't sit down in the pews. Ezra would read from the book. And from my understanding, the people would be in different groups. And the Levites would go amongst the people and say, this is what Nehemiah read. This is what it means. Anybody got any questions in this group? They wanted to make sure the people knew exactly what God said and what God meant and what God told them to do. No ifs, ands, or loopholes about it. So they read in the book, in the law of God, distinctly. Brother James Knox has an excellent way of distinctly reading and preaching the Word of God. I'll tell you how you don't distinctly read the Word of God. It says over here, but it says this in the Greek. But it really doesn't mean this. It, that's not distinctly, that's poorly. And gave the sense. We have five senses. The sense make you know, make you understand, make you grasp. They give it sense. You know what churches do today? You know that I'm going to say it. They give you nonsense. The only more sense that that's in the common church today is the pennies, nickels, and dimes that goes in the collection plate. And cause them to understand the reading. And you back that with 1 Timothy 4.13. Cause them. Get it right. No, no, you don't have it right. Listen to me. Okay, finally, you got it right. All right. They didn't walk away from this not knowing nothing. And Nehemiah, which is the Tarshita, we've, we've seen that, that name before, and that's just the governor. And now we know who the Tarshita is. You just have to read a little more. And Ezra the priest, the scribe, and the Levites that taught the people, said unto all the people, This day is holy unto the Lord your God. So that's where you get holy day. Oh, excuse me. America drops the Y, puts I for me, and you get holiday. I'll say that again for you idiots out there. They take the Y, change it to I for me, and make it holiday. It's supposed to be a holy day unto God. 
We're supposed to have holy days or holidays to servicemen in this country, and we go out and kill a pig and, and serve it up and beef and all that and have a great time while our soldiers don't get no respect. And don't give me, you got this little ribbon you put in the back of the car, you know, I support. All you support was the stupid company that made those magnets and now rich. As much as you support that mission, that, that soldier by buying that stupid dollar at the dollar store magnet in the back of your car, it's like, oh yeah, I just, I do God's work. I just throw a couple hundred dollars or whatever to a missionary and let him, I, don't, I don't care what he does, I just, I throw them on each one. And I don't have to do nothing. I should have each one of these messages served with a bottle of iodine. This day is holy unto the Lord your God. More not. Nor we. For all the people wept when they heard the words of the Lord. Now look at that. When was the last time people wept when you opened up the Word of God to read it to them? Evidently, this is, they probably did not get the Word when they were in Babylon. Or they didn't get it like they're getting it here in the land. They can look over and there's the temple. They can look around now, all the walls are built, we're home. We've been, what is it, 70, year, 70 years in Babylon? I think it is. In those 70 years, how many family members have they buried in Babylon? How many actually came back? Then he said unto them, Go! Isn't it great after you get right with God, there's that, that verb, go? The Bible tells us, go ye all the world and preach the gospel. Nehemiah says, hey, we read the word. You got right with God. Go. They're in Egypt. And God says, listen, put the blood upon the door post, upon the, the lentil above the door. And, you know, keep your sandals on. And when I tell you to go, go. Jesus tells his disciples in Acts, go ye all, you know, into uh, Jerusalem. Samaria and all the parts of the world, and they're sitting there, hey, hey, we're having a good time. They have to throw a little persecution to get them moving. By the way, go is the shortest sentence in our English language. You can write the word G-O period and you have a sentence. I understand that. But that's what it said. Your way. Now that doesn't mean you go about your own living, your own standards. I mean, you go your own way home. Eat the fat. Well, Deuteronomy 28, 15, 35, they weren't supposed to eat the fat. This is not the sacrificial offering. And drink the sweet. I'd love to have that verse today. Put it right. The sweet for today would be soda. They had sweet drinks back then. They knew what sugar was. They knew what honey was. The sweet and natural sweeteners. Pure grape juice was sweet. And send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Care packages. If people don't have, make up a box, make up a package. Give it unto them who don't have, who are lacking. Well, we do that for the Christmas child. Yeah, you do it without anything. Jesus Christ, no gospel tracks, a bunch of junk for a kid to fatten his face up. And then give him a stupid toothbrush and then let him die and go to hell.
Well, we bring food into the third world country. Yeah, but you don't bring Jesus. All you do is fatten them up for hell. Cook them a little longer. For this day is holy unto your Lord. Neither be ye sorry, for the joy of the Lord is your strength. Listen, don't, don't be upset. Don't be in tears. Be happy. Doesn't that remind you of something? One period of time is going to happen when New Jerusalem comes down and we're forever with the Lord. Don't you dare be sorry because guess what? God wipes away all your tears. Be happy. So the Levites st stilled all the people saying, hold your peace. For the day is holy. Neither be ye grieved. And all the people went their way to eat and to drink and to send portions and to make great mirth. Celebration, happiness, joyful time. That's a weird word, mirth. If you didn't think, if you didn't really know nothing, you look at that word mirth, I always figured, so I looked it up in the dictionary, I always thought it was something bad. I kept reading, make mirth, make mirth, I'm like, and then finally look it up, it's a joyful time. Just one of those words that just don't look like what it should be. Because they had understood the words that were declared unto them. They didn't walk out of the church service. Well, what was all that message about? Well, I don't know. Let's go out to eat. Oh, I know. He was long-winded. On the second day, we're gathered together the chief of the fathers of all the people. The priests and the Levites unto Ezra the scribe, even to understand the words of the Lord. Here's the hierarchy. Here's the, the rulers of the people. They want to know more. Why aren't you going to see a revival in America? Because our leaders of our country doesn't want to have nothing to do. Their laws, never mind God's laws. There are people who have been on Capitol Hill and violated the law and still sit on Capitol Hill or died on Capitol Hill and they should have been in jail by man's law. Never mind God's law because already you got one guy who wanted to put the Ten Commandments in this courtroom. They said no. When you go to court and they say, do you swear to tell the whole truth? Where's the Bible? Well, we don't carry that no more. And it is illegal almost to carry a Bible in the, in the schoolroom. And Lord forbid if you take a Koran and flash it down the toilet, which I don't know how you can do that. Something about that. You can't flush a book down the toilet. But yet, when you take our soldiers' Bibles or going over to the Middle East, and gather them up and tell them you can't, they can't have it. And then the government, the army, burns them. Nothing is said. And I have been told by soldiers themselves from Facebook, soldiers that I knew, that their Bibles were burned. They are not allowed to carry a gospel tract. They're not allowed to carry a Bible in a country that we're supposed to be giving them independence. We're supposed to be giving them democracy. We're supposed to be protecting them. And yes, I'm talking about born again Christian Bush. When we were over there in desert fart, desert storm, whatever kind of stuff, with those great weapons of mass destruction that were never found. He started messing around with Israel, and God said, okay, I'll give you a nice little, I'll just flood your house out a little bit, okay? The leaders wanted to know the word. The people wanted to know the word. They cried because they heard the word. Now, I can't even, won't even tell you the testimonies I've seen the word from from. Churches I've been in flying down the road off the top of the car, being thrown on the basketball court so they can play basketball and everything else. 
How about the people that make the Bibles? They fall apart. And they found written the law which the Lord had commanded by Moses and the children of Israel to dwell in booths. This will be Le Leviticus 23 in the feast of the seventh month. Leviticus 16. This is in what month in our calendar? September, October. What are they to make? So what celebration do you have in America around September, October with booths? Fairs and carnivals. I'm going to tell you something about carnivals. There's a word that matches carnivals and it's called a gimmick. A gimmick would be any kind of uh, game that you play that they would push a button, pull a lever, do whatever it was to make sure you did not win. That's what a gimmick is. So we run to the Bible and we have our pulpit and we stand up for the word of God and then we say amen, we raise our hands and then we have these bulls for church and all that. But you don't cry over the word of God and the booths have nothing to do with church. You've gone far away from these booths. Now, early America, early Baptist history, you would have a time at the church when, listen, you were surrounded by crops. And there was times, very little time for church, but you still went, and the whole entire town would go and help each other and do everybody's crops. And when you were done with all that, you would gather crops, you bring them to the church house, you give them to people who have needs, you give them to the pastor, and you would have a fellowship and a time of meals and corn and wheat and you know Mrs. Smith's pickled uh, pickles and the George's tomato sauce and we had everything that everybody had and it'd be a celebration of all the hard work. That's the closest thing you had to what's going on in Nehemiah and it has nothing to do with the crap. I like to say another word that's going on in the churches but I want to be decent so I'll say dung. You don't see the word carnival, carn, carn, carny, carnicky hall, carnal. You are carnal. I couldn't feed you with, with meat, Paul says. You are so carnal, you're letting a guy sleep with you, his father's um, wife and enjoying it, carnal. So this is where this comes from. Read on to see what it is. That they should publish. All right, publish. You put out and proclaim in all the cities and in Jerusalem, saying, there's that word again, go forth into the mount. Jerusalem's on a mountain. Fetch olive branches, type of the Lord Jesus Christ, Olive berries were used for anointing the priests in your faces. First thing would be you have a, a, a witness of the Holy Spirit. Today you got the unholy spirit. And pine branches. Why pine branches? I don't know. And myrtle branches. Why myrtle? I don't know. And palm branches. Now that one's weird. Because wasn't the palm tree and palm branches one of the decorations in the, in the temple that Solomon did? There was something about that palm tree. And branches of thick trees to make booze as is written. And notice it says, what does it say? Does it say the wood or does it say the branches? It says branches. You don't go cut two by fours and four by eights. You make yourself a little branch house. Tracy would love that. You would have fresh air going through that. Natural air conditioning. 
Little twigs, maybe. You know what? And see these little things all around the city? Would been, I mean, it would have been a pretty little picture. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of their house, or his house, and in their courts, and in the courts of the house of God, and in the streets of the water gate, and the streets of the gates of the Ephraim. They're everywhere were these little, these little uh, booths made from branches. And nowhere is it recorded they were to go buy this wood. They were to go get their own wood. So then sometime along the way, some Christian, hey, if I cut the wood and all that, I can start charging my fellow Christians. You don't believe me? What were they doing at the temple when Jesus went in there kicking everything out? They were selling everything they needed. Well, it says back in the law, I mean, if you if it's too far away, you, you sell what you have, bind up the money, and come into Jerusalem and buy all you need. So we'll just provide this. Ha ha! The love of money. So the people went forth and brought them and made themselves booths, everyone upon the roof of his house, and upon the courts, in the courts of the house of God, and the street of the water gate, and the street of the gate of Ephraim. And all the congregation of them that were again out of the captivity from Babylon, brought to Babylon from Babylon, made booths and sat under the booths. For since the days of Joshua, who's that? The son of Nun. Joshua. What does Joshua mean? Means Jehovah saves. What name is replaced in in, in Stephen's Stephen's uh, message? Is his history lesson to the Hebrews? What what name is replaced for Joshua? Jesus. They were dwelling in what? Booths from trees. Trees in the Bible are like likened to men. One man that was blind says, "I see men walking as trees. Trees have a family line." They have cells. They're living. They have limbs. The Bible says they're going to clap. I believe that literally. Some people don't. I do. But that's my own thing. And then Joshua's mentioned. The one that brings them into the promised land. And this is the seventh month. And if you read, go back and read all about the Feast of Tabernacle. And I'm going to say this, and you do not have to take my word. There is nothing doctrinally about this. Well, if you just take what we just read here, this looks like the birthday of Jesus. In the seventh month, all the people go to the mountain, grab the branches, make themselves little booths, and they sit in them. And Jesus came and took on a tabernacle, for we are we are the tabernacle, became in the veil of flesh, and here's Joshua. Don't we indwell with with Jesus? Don't Jesus dwell with us? The day had not the children of Israel done so. So from all the time from Joshua to Nehemiah chapter 8, they have never celebrated or, or done this holy day. The Feast of Tabernacles. Now, we are told also, like I say, you, this is not provable on that, but when Jesus was born in a stable, would that have been a nice manufactured kind of building? Or would it be just something just kind of thrown together with sticks and logs? That's not a possibility. Also, day by day, from the first day unto the last day, which was seven days, Oh, and on the eighth day, guess who was circumcised and called Jesus? Okay. He read in the book of the law of God. 
So when you have a meeting, a special meeting in your church, how long should it be? You want to go by scriptures? Seven days. Seven days they read before the people. And they didn't go home. I'm going to tell you something. And I don't care if people don't like it. They can get a <laughs> on you. This meetings we're going to have coming up in September. <laughs> Look at that. Where it almost looks like we ain't coming home to nighttime to go to bed. Looks like he may be trying to celebrate what the, uh, the uh, well, I was, I forgot the name of it. Feast of Tabernacles. <laughs> he has it more right. They're going to go and dwell and dwell with the brethren. That's what all Israel is doing. They're not, they're not in their houses. They're dwelling in these little booths everywhere. And you can hear your neighbor snoring and farting and everything else. You can hear them whispering and talking. I wish you wouldn't use the word fart. I wish you guys wouldn't talk about Jesus in the Bible the way you do. You quit farting around the word, and I'll quit mentioning fart. And they kept the feast seven days, and on the eighth day, now come on, come on, was a Solomon sem Solomon Solomon Solemn assembly. Assembly means a group of people, right? Are you ready for this one? Mary. Joseph. The little baby hasn't been named on the eighth day. Simeon. Anna. And the rest of the family. Wouldn't that have been an assembly? Do you think Mary and Joseph, when they brought Jesus, do you think they lived in a house? Or do you think they had a makeshift kind of building? A little more stuff thrown out there. I mean, I'm not saying, but scripture with scripture, it points, but it doesn't point. So we conclude with another Nehemiah chapter. And remember, Nehemiah is going to happen again. They're going to build the temple, they're going to build those walls. But the temple has been built. And there's joyful times. we got the book of Esther coming up. Where a king comes in. We'll conclude.